Enter the Stars, and everything you're about to watch in this one hour montage are revelations made on this channel going back to 2018. When you hear moments of silence, it's because there is something on your screen that you need to see. In fact, the visual elements of all of my shows are just as important as the audio. So, please be watching and reading the short captions. Let's get into this. See, there is something very strange about the altar that Noah sent up to heaven through the rainbow. It mysteriously looks like a bow and arrow. Why? Because God knew that his son would be pierced in the side with a long arrow. Pierced in his side. God's side pierced, giving his only begotten son so that humanity could be saved. Just like he saved Noah. Pierced in the side of the burning altar. The beasts. You see, God gave Noah permission to eat all that moves. And this was the rise of the hunters. And it's peculiar because when Jesus transfigured to heaven, he became that smoke, that pillar of cloud. On the altar, the same altar that Noah offered, a pillar of smoke or a pillar of cloud rising back up to the heavens, piercing the rainbow in the clouds. You see, the Hebrew word for arrow is Katis, which sounds a lot like Katniss, who wielded an arrow that broke through the dome in the Hunger Games. And you see all the many meanings of the word for arrow, such as staff, wound, which seem to point back to Jesus Christ. Now this is amazing because nobody has ever contemplated these things before or dug deeper into the root meanings of these words and made these revelations. And it's because we've been stuck in these paradigms of truth fed to us by organizations and religious bodies who claim authority over all biblical truth, who claim authority over all biblical truth, but never really offer anything new. And this is what the Bible said would happen in the last days. Claiming authority, but having no power. You see, the Bible says that knowledge will increase in the last days. And if a group claiming to be an authority of God's truth is not increasing in knowledge, then they lack the Holy Spirit. On St. Patrick's Day, we decoded this Google Doodle that included the Triskelon and the Triple Knot. We linked this to the Festival of Samhain, in which gates were opened in time, on the 5th of November, when the Veil of Reality was opened. The Triskelon and Triple Knot look a lot like the Flux Capacitor in Back to the Future. The time travel film in which the 5th of November is featured. We even talked about the Sith mounds that the pagans claim are used to travel through time. Today I watched How to Build a Time Machine and every single element we just spoke about was featured in the opening of this film. Watch. People come here every year from all over the world because this is the winter solstice. So all of these old monuments they were aligned to the rising sun, so they're all very important. But this is the most famous and most important of the pagan monuments. They are literally the same three-dimensional space as people from ancient cultures. Something very strange happens as we travel faster and faster in space. Time slows down. Would time stop if we were able to reach the speed of light? Time travel to the future is not science fiction, it's science fact. There was an experiment that was done in 1971 at the Naval Observatory. What they did was to take two atomic clocks, 
but they put one of the atomic clocks on an ordinary passenger jet and they kept the other atomic clock at rest at the Naval Observatory. When they flew the passenger jet around the world close to the speed of sound, when they brought it back, they found that the passenger jet clock had actually slowed down. Had actually slowed down. And that lost time compared to the clock that was at rest at the Naval Observatory. So those scientists that were on board actually aged less. When we have rockets that can go fast enough close to the speed of light, we will see this effect and it will have sociological implications. The light of the world is Jesus Christ. Eternity, timelessness. And when we enter his light, we live forever. Those who have attempted to see the face of God and have died in the presence of that glory is this really a result of time speeding up so fast that the person ages instantaneously to death we know that only in the spirit can we enter heaven flesh cannot enter and maybe that's what that was all about in the Bible and another thing there is something else to the spiral as it relates to time and I haven't quite put my finger on it. We know that the elite use the spiral to represent evil and that it is even used as the pedo spiral. Is this really about representation of stealing of time through sacrifice? Life in this material realm, extending life, in other words, defying time. We know that Saturn is Kronos and Kronos is time. And interestingly enough, one of these spirals actually makes up the outer ring of Saturn. I don't think this is an accident. Physicists are working on a time machine that they claim uses a spiral laser to warp time within its field show is that the circulating beam of light will cause a twisting of the empty space inside the square for a circulating cylinder of light. What I had discovered was a time machine essentially based on light. This twisting of empty space is technically called frame dragging. You think of the coffee as being like empty space and you think of the spoon as being like a circulating light beam. As you take the spoon and stir the coffee, the coffee starts swirling around. That's what the circulating light beam is doing. It's actually causing empty space to swirl around. When you put something like a coffee bean into the coffee, the coffee will drag the coffee bean around. The thing that plays the role of the coffee bean is a neutron. So what I realized is if I put that into the empty space and you turn the laser on, that it's going to actually start dragging the neutron around. This actually shows that a circulating light beam can twist empty space. The laser experiment bears a strong resemblance to the library of time in the film Interstellar. The Tesseract. A cube has also been associated with the time prison. And these time machine experiments look like cubes.
Now, in Einstein's theory, it turns out that space and time are linked to each other. Whatever you do to space also happens to time. If the circulating light beam is intense enough, and the space twisting is strong enough, time could actually be twisted into a loop. Don Coleman had his time machine tube spent there and recommended them. These are the, the parts that we did for you. These are the remaining parts because it's brass. And, and uh, this is called the Architron. And, and has all the dimensions, all the math of the Ark of the Covenant. Is there a good version of the spiral of time? We know that God led the Ark of the Covenant as a pillar of fire by night and cloud by day. A spiral. And we know that Moses parted the Red Sea with a staff. And that same staff turned into a snake and consumed other snakes in the Pharaoh's court. Are these spirals, these staffs, are they mini gates that allow just a bit of the infinite power of God into this reality? A sort of time machine. Yes, no problem. Yeah, we're golden. Wonderful. 42 pounds. 42 pounds. An empty school bus swallowed by a black hole. But where are the children? In the skepticism of the truth, everybody forgot to ask where the children were. These were the dreams of people very close to CERN. Dreams of a school bus engulfed by a black hole. This is the world above CERN. And in this documentary called The Circle, they discuss time travel, the creation of life, madness, and sacrifice. What is a circle? It's a time loop. These are excerpts from the documentary, The Circle, and it's not what you think it is. He smiles and gazes straight in front of him and then his head starts to grow and grow until it reaches the roof of the bus. I can see nothing else. My eyes are fixed on this image. I can't move. Time stops. Only my thoughts continue. Time stops as if it had never been before. You see, they are working on changing time at CERN. There are people who say that the LHC can produce such a phenomenon, a black hole that makes disappear the entire earth. These kids were in the barracks of CERN and climbed up the water tower there, a hundred meters deep. What were they doing underground? The circle will be my track. And as he walks, we see the adrenochrome soccer ball. And this is repeated several times in this documentary. The soccer ball is adrenochrome, the molecule. Sometimes there are landmarks that show us the way, but most people have no idea that they are standing right on top of the LHC. The ring passes exactly under those big trees. Until here, through the middle of this field, it is about 80 meters deep. 
This cherry tree stands exactly above the circle. And it produces fruit like there was nothing going on. The cherries are excellent. Now they make instruments, says this man. To see what the human race can become in the future. Because the human race must go on. That's the reason why we must keep trying to be able to glimpse of the future. The universe creates things that we don't understand. And the scientists want to recreate what initiated the universe. I wonder what they are doing, says this man. I think we don't know everything. They're hiding things from us, but that's science. Those scientists are very intelligent people. I met one of them when I was still a florist. He wanted to buy flowers for his wife's birthday. He didn't even realize that he was in his pajamas. He had lost his mind. He was in his own world. They might say I'm the crazy one, but I often think these people come from a different planet. Religion teaches us that we live and we will relive. But then, is there anyone that has ever come back? Who will come back to tell us? No one ever came back. They're talking about time. I've heard that there simply isn't a before because time isn't linear. We end up with notions that surpass me, says this man. Research would be simply be wrong if a scientist would pose from the start that there isn't a God. That kind of reasoning is wrong, says this priest, because you exclude the possibility of discovering God. Yet, that's exactly what they're doing. God created this earth. Scientists always want to know more than they already do, says this man. They try to find out if God really does exist. Was it really him? They always want to continue to explore and discover. That's the purpose of research. But I, with the very little knowledge that I have, I wonder if it is of any use. And then there's the delusion that aliens seeded the planet and that one day we will all begin to understand and be able to recreate life in our image according to this couple. One of the most uh, stunning possibilities envisioned by certain scientists the creation of black holes, of black holes, was the creation of black holes. If it's a failure, I think it's a beautiful and poetic failure. And it's almost like in terms of the Tower of Babel. 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 Trying to reach some ultimate uh, meaning of, of existence. And when the night fell, he kept us busy by making us look up at the sky. He taught us about the stars. And at the end he gave each of us half of the sky to count. Counting the stars to make time go by faster. In a way the scientists also Look at the stars, smashing particles, grains of sand, just like the stars. Black holes, the number 88, 
time travel. These things repeat over and over again in these films. The snail shell is a spiral, a black hole shape in the newest episode of The Twilight Zone. The snail shell encodes the Fibonacci spiral or phi, which looks like the Phoenician letter Q, which represents the eye of the needle or gates to other worlds. We also know that CERN is laid out like a giant letter Q. And we showed you a few years ago that the exit that we see above doors in all these films and TV shows is the word time backwards. And Emmett Doc Brown of Back to the Future was named that for a reason. Because Emmett, like Exit, is time backwards. So this episode is about a camera that when rewound turns back time. So, uh, so throughout the entire episode they keep passing the 88 sign which represents time and space. Why? Because the analema path of the sun and moon, the two heavenly bodies that are used to make calendars, they make number eight and two of those eights is 88. Up ahead. Exit right on Emmett Avenue. Exit right on Emmett Avenue. Exit right on Emmett Avenue. So 88 becomes time and space. Now there's much more to it than that but as far as we can tell this is why they love the number 88 when it comes to time travel. And this keeps repeating over and over again in these time travel films. Now the plot continues. No matter how many times the mother rewinds time, she is harassed by the same cop. And I believe the cop represents the copper blue bloods, which are at enmity with God's people. The good versus the bad. This was talked about all the way in the book of Genesis. prophecy of the enmity between the seeds, the holy bloodline versus the seeds of Satan. And so God's people are trapped in this time loop with the blue bloods. I covered this in a documentary called Blue Bloods. We also saw the same cop versus man scenario in the Terminator film franchise. But of course, they depicted the cop versus the machine transhumanism. Now the young man is headed off to college in this episode of the Twilight Zone and he is cast as a truther type. He defies the cop, refusing to show his ID and so on and so forth, triggering this cop and escalating every situation into violence where he ends up dead. Good evening folks. I'm starting to believe more and more and all that stuff the old folks tell you. All those quiet whispers about those things that our ancestors brought over from the motherland. So the mother and son essentially become targeted individuals, trapped in repeated exchanges with this same cop over and over again, trapped in a time loop with no escape. And that's really all of us. Now, the episode is full of overtones of racism against the mom and son. And this plays out with every single encounter. But no matter how polite the mom is, she can't de-escalate the situation. Now in the background we see Black Lives Matter posters and stuff like that. And then at the end, they finally escape the time loop by standing up to the white cop, right? Now, here we see the Circle of CERN enclose this entire scene. Why do I say that? Because as the mom finally makes her stand against the cop, the circle ironwork is the gate to the school. And so a gate is like a time gate, right? Now just before this, they arrive at the school via an underground tunnel 
to try to avoid further interactions with this cop. So that points back to CERN as well, which is buried underground. So I just wanted to review this episode of The Twilight Zone and show you that all the stuff we've been talking about, they're starting to show now repetitively in these new episodes of films regarding time travel. So we weren't mistaken. Now, as you guys know, we were all hot on the heels of this 5th of November date. We compared it to Saw Win, which is related to in bulk and related to Halloween. All of it is Druid pagan sacrifice. We proved that in previous videos. But what we didn't know is that November 5th was the release date of the film Interstellar in 2014. Now this is nuts. And the interesting thing about this date is that it does in fact relate back to Halloween. This is Halloween. There's a character in this film and her name is Murph, played by Jessica Castain. Murphy Murph. When I look up Murphy, it is the same as the demon from hell, Mephistopheles. This was in a 1926 film called Faust. They profiled Mephistopheles, Murphy. And it just so happens the girl in this film, her name is Murph, Murphy. Now, Anne Hathaway, the lead female, was 33 when the film released. And finally, we have Matthew McConaughey, who was born on the 4th of November, one day before the 5th of November. And look at this heliotro purple, the magic colors, full knowledge of what is going on here. This guy is pretty high up, most likely, in, in, in the knowledge of all of, of this occult. He knows exactly what he's doing. Now, some of you are probably wondering, wow, you've got your, you've got your name and your ex-wife's name in this film. She was born on 9-11. And Anne Hathaway was born one day off from Paris's 9-11. And you would think that I would be living in fear, but I do not. Because in the same way this information was revealed to us miraculously, it offers protection. Now, all of this film is rotating around the fact and centering around the fact that there is a black hole near Saturn. It is all about the cube, the Tesseract, even mentioned here in the plot. The Tesseract was in the book about time travel. This is the book here, A Wrinkle in Time. And within this book, they talk about a Tesseract. The first time that the word tesseract was used was in 1888 here is the figure eight on the cover of a wrinkle in time which mentions the tesseract but here is the record for tesseract first being coined in 1888 by charles howard hinton so there's your 888 connection again remember Obama was born 88 days before Halloween, and he is fully invested in, in, in the middle of all of what we're talking about right now. Okay, this is the Tesseract. It is a cube. This is mentioned in the plot of Interstellar. They want you to accept the cube. Saturn, the North Pole of Saturn is a cube. Here are some pictures of the North Pole of Saturn, and it is a hexagonal but three-dimensional cube. You connect the lines in the middle, and you have a three-dimensional cube. That is what it really is. It looks like a hexagon, but it's really a cube. This is what rules our reality. This is what rules our ev the evil in this world. This is the eye of evil. We have the eye of good and the eye of evil. Now the film centers around the dust and the dirt, and they talk about how it has infiltrated everything. And it almost looks as though they are referencing the Dust Bowl. They are interviewing in the opening scenes people that look like they were around during the Dust Bowl in the Midwest, describing that dust was everywhere. And they had to turn the plates upside down so that they didn't fill with dust. Well, guess what? The World Trade Center turned to dust. Guess what? 
Sandy Hook Elementary was dustified to erase all evidence of what happened. Guess what? The curse in the Bible was the curse of the dust. The serpent was told you will go upon your belly and eat dust all the days of your life. And then miraculously, Cain also was given a curse of dust, that the, that the fields would not yield his crops. And that is exactly what happened in the opening of this film. The crops would not grow anymore. Basically mimicking the story of the Cain, of Cain. And these are the Canaanites that they're talking about, always trying to find a way out of the curse into the stars. Do you now understand what is really going on here? And they're trying to drag you into their deception. But there is only one way off this planet, and that is Jesus Christ. Not their promises of finding other worlds and planets. This one has to live out its destiny. And Jesus is the only way to the Father is through the Son. So when I say enter the stars, it means something completely different than what these people are talking about. Our place outside of the prison, the honeycomb prison, outside of the matrix of the inner eye, and past and on through to the white light of heaven. Heaven is where we will go if we believe. Because it isn't about another planet and these people providing the solution. It's about us knowing exactly what the Bible says, that all will know his name when he returns. We all know who he is. We will all see him all together. We won't have to go anywhere. He is coming for us. Now we have some other bizarre synchronicities. Matthew McConaughey was in two time travel films, Contact and Interstellar. Interstellar released on 11-7, Contact released on 7-11. Mirror dates, same actor. We also had the Saturn rainbow of fire. This is the black hole and what it looks like in the film. It looks like Saturn with rings in a rainbow. Now the rainbow is interesting because a rainbow can only be viewed at 42 degrees from your perspective. We also know that the angle from the outside iris of your eye to the center of your lens within your eye is a perfect 42 degree angle. There's something about the rainbow. And oftentimes the devil will try to impersonate God using this rainbow. We know the rainbow came from God. It was part of the covenant with Noah after the flood. We know that Twitter changed their their favorite button to a heart on 11-3, one day before Egyptian Valentine's Day. Here, Anne Hathaway talks about following her heart. Just before she talks about love. We love people who've died. Where is the social utility in that? None. Maybe it means something more, something we can't yet understand. Maybe it's some evidence, some artifact of a higher dimension that we can't consciously perceive. I'm drawn across the universe to someone I haven't seen in a decade, who I know is probably dead. Love is the one thing we're capable of perceiving that transcends dimensions of space and time. Maybe we should trust that, even if we can't understand it yet. Do you see how they're setting all this up for the great deception? This is Anne Hathaway's words in this film. The question is what, is, what is the effect of all of the sheep and the masses that don't see what's going on? Now, in this scene, they talk about the faked moon landings, the Apollo missions. And this woman talks about how they had to correct the textbooks to account for the faked moon landing. And that it was done to bankrupt the Soviet Union, to get them invested in trying to come up with rockets to get to the moon. And so... This The woman that is explaining this in the scene is, is framed as a lunatic, crazy person. And she says, we should talk about what's going on in this planet instead of exploring the universe. And do you, so do you see the juxtaposition? Okay, They're making the people who understand the truth look like they're crazy. 
and that they're making the mainstream people be the ones who want to explore the stars, right? Explore what's above, okay? Which is the deception. So Matthew McConaughey discovers NASA. He gets the coordinates through some kind of a magnetic gravitational anomaly that appears inside his house. He writes down the ones and zeros and comes up with the binary code to the coordinates leading him to a secret NASA base. And they say, we are NASA. And as he stands in front of this pillar, we see evil in the background. And as many of you know, I've done videos on NASA. And when you spell that backwards, it says Satan. But the T is missing, but it's really there because there's a red chevron. Now, for those who are having a hard time believing in a spiritual realm and anything outside of this reality, all of these films have biblical elements to them. In this film, it is the Lazarus missions. Lazarus, of course, a Bible character. And there were 12 worlds they were looking at. Those are the 12 disciples right here out of the script. And, and it is McConaughey's job now to become the new pilot for the last and final mission to try to find potential worlds that they can escape to because Earth, they believe, is dying. There's your cube, Saturn. He goes to leave. He says his final goodbyes to Murph. Now, if you weren't sure about Matthew McConaughey, TARS, the robot, has a humor setting on it. And the humor setting is high. So he talks to Matthew McConaughey about blowing him out of the airlock. This is a direct reference to the film Alien, where Sigourney Weaver blows the alien out of the airlock in that film. The alien, the serpent spider-like alien out of the airlock. Now in this scene, she talks about the beings that led them there and that for them, time is relative. And for them, time is like mountains that they can climb up in the past like a canyon. And in fact, that is how it is in heaven. There is no time in heaven. But they're not talking about heavenly beings in this diatribe here. They are talking about the beings that brought them there to try to save the earth. And that is the dark beings. So the entire movie is centered around the fact that farming was in danger because there was a blight that was killing everything. One fruit, one vegetable at a time. Now in this scene, the daughter Murph tries to warn her dad or ask him questions about did you know there was no return trip? Did you know there was no way to save humanity? But a, the a robot intercepts the message. So again, it's the betrayal of the robot. Just like we had in Alien, the Alien films. They had the betrayal of the robot. The android was always betraying the crew. And it happens again here. And then that brought me to the point where we were looking at a far off distance shot of the ship. And it looks like a serpent head. In fact, it looks like the Nostromo from the original Alien film. It is the head of the Cobra, the serpent. On your left, the Ranger, the spacecraft from the film Interstellar that we're decoding now. On your right, the, the Narcissus, which is the escape craft of the Nostroma, where the alien has blown out the airlock. And as you can see, they're very similar. They look like the head of a Cobra. And we see that now we get the reference of blowing them out the airlock because the ships are almost identical. And the joke is, when Ripley blows the serpent out the airlock, the serpent really never leaves. It's always with us. The serpent will be cursed upon to go upon its belly and eat dust the rest of the days of its life. Cain carried the serpent's seed. That's why he was also cursed the dust as well. The only way to correct it is Jesus Christ. That is the big white elephant in the room that no religion will tell you. No religion will tell you this because then they knew they would know that you would need Christ. And in your mind, you would have a higher faith that transcends all. So toward the end of this film, Matthew McConaughey goes into the event horizon, into the black hole. He gets sucked into the, this cube and he can see Murph as she was a little girl through the bookshelf of all places. But he's trapped. And he sees the moment in time over and over again of him coming in and saying goodbye 
and this in Murph's room, which is the center of this magnetic and gravitational anomaly, which is basically himself talking to himself from the other side of the wormhole, telling himself not to go on the mission so he could spend the last days in the entire life with his family instead of leaving. And there again is your book, your your shoe shoe rack. Uh, remember Mephisto is Mephisto shoes from France. And in the final analysis, he decides he's going to use love to communicate with Murph through the barrier. That is what he's decided. So this is all ties in with everything we've just been talking about, Egyptian Valentine's Day and, and the love principle. But it's the false love that they're talking about, you guys. It's the deception. Here's a script. And this is what he says. The end of the film. Love, Tars, love. It's just like Brand said, my connection with Murph. It is quantifiable. It is the key. Why are we here to find out how to tell? And in the last moments of the film, he has put into orbit around Saturn where there is a station named after Murphy called Cooper Station, called Cooper Station, called Cooper Station. And this is where the human race lives, orbiting Saturn. And he says to Murphy, his daughter, who is now old and aged, you told them I like farming. And this goes back to the Canaanite theme we were talking about because Cain was the first farmer. And God had to reject his gift because he had the serpent blood running through him. It was for no other reason that he could, he could not accept his offering other than he had the serpent blood running through him. He accepted Abel's offering because Abel was pure. But then Cain killed his brother. And that is how this movie ends. With him telling her, you told them I like farming. And the whole movie is about the farming. The farming of Cain. And the first fruits that he brought to God that were rejected. So for those of you that were able to join the show yesterday, you saw that we had actually looked at a CERN animation. And in that animation, there were some signs and symbols of things that we had covered on this channel regarding the true purpose, or at least the analogy of what they're trying to achieve at CERN. Well, we dug deeper because on that show, I had mentioned that there was a documentary about the people that lived in the towns around CERN. Now, what I found in digging was nothing less than fascinating. I found this final scene in the documentary called The Circle. I finally found a copy of it. This is probably the only copy on the internet without having to ask permission to get this documentary. And this is chilling. I told you this was about sacrifice and children. We showed you that in the animation, the adrenochrome and melatonin colors. These are the final scenes of the documentary, a school bus descending into a black hole. I can only play seconds of this. Uh, Europe has really cracked down on anything that's used. Um, with their new laws and this should this is coming our way make no mistake you guys this censorship is actually coming our way now in this documentary what i'm going to show you here they talk about all of these towns within the large hadron collider and basically what you have here is this is all of cern pretty much you have these concentric circles that spin out these particles and they enter each succession of circles until it gets to the largest circle, which is the Large Hadron Collider. Then at a certain point, beams are sent in opposite opposing directions within this Large Hadron Collider and they're smashed against each other. Well, in our analysis, we talked about how sending these beams at close to the speed of light could have some effect on the inner field 
inside this circle. And that other physicists were working on sending laser beams in a spiral around objects to change time within the object. So I had known about this documentary called The Circle um, a couple years ago. There was a film festival here at CERN. And they talked about The Circle, the maker of the film, talked about how they went through many of these towns and interviewed people. And I could not get my hands on this documentary. I finally found one site where they made you request. You had to make a special re request to screen it. You had to tell what company you were from and all this stuff. In other words, they don't want people seeing this documentary. And this is what we're going to look at today. So at this point, I'm looking and I'm investigating all of these cities in here. I'm looking for the documentary. I find the documentary and I start looking into like Geneva and some of these cities in here. And I found something very fascinating. Many of these high level occultists lived on Lake Geneva, either on the Switzerland side or on the French side. These are big names. Edmund Ludlow, King Charles the first. Make this bigger so you guys can see this. Now, this is the lake that borders CERN, okay? Lord Byron, Charlie Chaplin. These people had huge homes on the banks of this Lake Geneva, which borders CERN. Richard Burton, Audrey Hepburn, David Bowie. We just decoded David Bowie. He had a chalet at the north end of Lake Geneva. Phil Collins, Queen. Rock band Queen owned and operated Mountain Recording Studios in Montreal. Freddie Mercury. They have a statue of him. So, Michael Schumacher. All these people had homes on Lake Geneva. Now, what else I noticed that was interesting is that the Large Hadron Collider, here's one of the cities within the area, didn't come online and didn't, you know, approach its completion until after the turn of the century, until after the 2000s is when all this construction and stuff was taking place. But yet, if you look here, I think this is the one that I had pulled up. Maybe not. There was an explosion of people that arrived in this area long before the Large Hadron Collider was completed. Here it is. And it happened in the 50s and 60s. Here it is here. Now, again, the Large Hadron Collider did not really begin its construction until like right around in this area. But yet, here we are. It's like they stacked the people up into this area before they actually began the experiment. This is unbelievable. So in 1960, CERN was a much smaller place. And so that should tell you something, almost like they were anticipating this. Now, I, I tried to chalk this up to, you know, these are the workers that were working on CERN. But no, this all happened before this. It's like they already knew they were going to do this large experiment. They had to somehow get everybody to show up to these little towns. And all of these towns have the same trend. It's not just this one town. Signy, here's the Signy town. Just here in the in the map here. Signy is right here. So all of these towns, if you look them up, Bertigny, Maconex, Omex, Previzen, Mons, all of these towns saw an explosion of population, just like Signy did in the 1960s, when CERN was a much smaller place. CERN existed, but it only had 
Atlas and like Caesar and like a couple other colliders, a couple other circles, not the Large Hadron Collider. That's a more recent development. So you got to ask yourself, what happened during this time frame? Well, they're starting to stack these people up in here. And is this some kind of large experiment? Now we're going to look at some screenshots from the documentary. And even though it's in a foreign language, you can see where they're headed with it. Okay. What they're actually trying to portray. So here's the school bus. Now, if you're lost on what the significance of the school bus is, you got to go back to the live show we did yesterday, in which we talked about how this all relates back to child sacrifice. Okay. So the thing I pulled out of this was they wanted to demonstrate abundance. They wanted to show you that the crops were doing really well. Here's a weird scene with a kid with a gun. Then they talk about, they show the tunnel being drilled. This is going on beneath the ground, underneath CERN. And see this guy showing his crops. This all goes back to kind of what we were talking about, about time somehow being manipulated within the field. Now, I don't know this. I'm not a scientist, but I wish that somebody could actually translate this video. I think it's in Polish or uh, whoever, whatever the people in Switzerland speak it, or French, a lot of it's in French. These are the people that live above CERN and you see the focus on farming in abundance, right? I don't know if they're trying to prove and show that this project, the super collider project did not affect the people, or if they're actually saying that they're experiencing some kind of a surplus, I don't know what they're saying here. But if you get into this, there's actually another more cryptic scene here showing um, these people in the school bus theme. Can't get here. Show all this artwork. No, this isn't it. Keep flipping through this. I'm kind of going through this fast because these artists are making these depictions. And they're talking about these black holes. Now, it's always been a fear. That there, that there would be some kind of black hole spawned from CERN. And they, they do everything they can to alleviate everyone's concerns. But yet they show the school bus disappearing into the black hole. There's another portion of this where they show more buses disappearing into this black hole. It's just what I'm trying to get to now. It's kind of skipping. There's soccer. Can't really draw any associations with that. I mean, although it has the adrenochrome molecule, you got to have more to it. And if I could hear the dialogue, there may be more connections, but I can't. Because again, it's in French. And Swiss. So it's basically it goes through and shows the life of all these people. Okay. Inside the circle. And there seems to be some kind of spiritual aspect to it. You know, they're looking up at the, at the stars and the sky, right? And who knows what they're actually saying. But it it's very intriguing. So here's the images that they show. Okay. This is this is just creepy. So they've got buses and campers and RVs. And they've got this woman in like a bus. Okay. There's a bus there. And there's the black hole. The bus disappears into the black hole, okay? And then, at, of course, the last scene of the documentary, it's actually a school bus. And look at, she's dead, basically. Look at this image here. The life is sucked out of her. It's just everything we've been talking about. That these people are vampires, sucking the life out of us. It's almost like they're disclosing. It's like a soft disclosure. So this lady's in a bus, and she's having... The life sucked out of her through this CERN experiment. Here's a doubling. This is the paperclip effect that we talked about. Splitting the personalities. Two separate dimensions. An alternate reality. All this is being depicted visually. Without even understanding the dialogue of what's going on. In this documentary. And if any of you speak the language of this documentary, chime in. 
um, if you could even watch it and just pull out the most important parts and you could translate for us, that would be appreciated because I'm sure there's much, much more to this than meets the eye. I'm going to go ahead and paste this. Now, everything we just used falls under fair use. We use very small clips, five to seven seconds. I'm sad that I have to state this, but this all falls under fair use. Here's the video here. And so we're basically trying to get down to the bottom of what's going on with this circle documentary. It could be completely innocent, but maybe it's not. It's up with the, what they were showing us there, the buses going into this black hole and children being on buses, you know, like a sacrifice almost. So I'm real interested to know what is going on in this region? What is the history of this region? What happened before this? Okay, this is right on the border of Switzerland and France. Here's Lake Geneva here. So this is like a plain, relatively flat plain. It actually increases in size or the elevation as you, um, I think, go south. It, it increases by maybe 50 feet, but it's generally a flat area. And underneath here, all these, you know, above here is all these people are living. And the experiment is going on below their feet. And you know they've got to be studying these people. You know they have to be. It's impossible that these people are living up there and they're not actually keeping track of everything that's going on and watching these people in their lives. And if there's any effect that they're not telling us about, there's got to be. But this is the story right here. This mass influx of people in 1960, when CERN was in its infancy, basically. The Large Hadron Collider was just a concept, but yet all these little towns on this map began to fill in. In a weird time in history, what was going on in France in 1960? I mean, there could have been an employer. I mean, obviously, CERN was an employer, but CERN was around before the 1960s. So why did the boost in employment come here at this point? Why didn't it come back in here in the, in the 40s and 50s when CERN actually opened? Why did it happen here? So these are questions that I'd like to have answered that maybe give us clues as to what this huge experiment is that's going on. Why are they spending $8 billion on a project and $1 billion per year? Why are all these countries coming together that... Some of them don't even get along with each other, but yet they're all on the same page for this project. Why are they spending billions a year when they can be spending those billions to erase the nine to five, 40 hour a week work week for people in this world who are basically working for, for free, working to basically survive? Why aren't they addressing those problems with the billions of dollars they're investing in projects like this? This is the question. It's no longer any question because they've got a school bus driving into a black hole full of children. So I don't know what else to tell people. If you can't show them stuff like this and they can't understand what's going on, then they're pretty much just done because the elite are basically admitting to you what they're doing in images like this.